How's it going, everybody? Wow. Um, <clears throat> I know Satan has tried to stop this one. Um, whatever God has to speak tonight. Um, right when I was about to go live, I mean, I had tons of messages. People started calling. And, <laughs> I mean, you know, I have WhatsApp, so I have people from other countries messaging me and you know, I had like literally, li literally in a mi mi matter of right before I was about to go live, I had like over 40 messages. It was insane. And um, I usually don't give out my number except I have a lot of contacts in other foreign countries that I do ministry with. And uh, yeah, I, I had to figure out how to silence that and so that I could go live. And um, I, I had so many messages. But um, yeah, I. Uh, Guys, I have something very important to speak. I know God is trying to get a message through, and I know it's going to help a lot of people. Um, and uh, it's going to probably help answer a lot of questions. I know a lot. I know a lot. I've spoken a lot about the law, and um, I, I'm going to speak a lot about grace today as well. And I, I want to very very much elaborate on exactly what the spirit does and what the controlling of the spirit does why it's so important and you're going to hear probably a way of salvation that is probably not being taught in most churches and i feel this is very important i'm going to speak from the prophets and i'm going to speak from the new testament and i'm going to show you exactly what the holy spirit is and so much so often people get it confused what the actual spirit is, what Yeshua Jesus did for us, and what 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 it actually means to be saved. And I, I believe this is very important for a lot of people because there's a lot of people questioning, am I saved? Am I saved? Or do I have salvation? And I'm about to get into some some things that's going to you know help you guys and just open your minds a lot to the spirit of God. And I pray he, he, he leads us and he guides. And I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um... Let's go. I'm going to actually go to Ezekiel here. I'm going to start at Ezekiel first. And uh, I'm going to explain about the, about the false deception going on really quickly before I get into more deeper things. And why this is so important. And um, you're going to see that a lot of things that even Jesus Yeshua was talking about, you're going to see it was spoken right here. And you're going to even see a lot of things that are even prevalent today that correlate to the day. It's nothing new. History repeats itself. And I, I, want, to, I want to tell you, read this actually first before I go here. In Galatians, we see he's teaching. Galatians 5, we see that he says it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by yoke of slavery. And people say, what is that yoke of slavery? They say, well, God's laws are yoke of slavery. He's saying, don't be overruled by sin again. That's what he's saying right there. He says, submit yourselves then to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you in James 4, 7. And I'm going to tell you what the work of the Spirit is. I'm going to tell you what salvation is so that you can be firm and sure that your foundation is, is in eternal life. And a, a lot of, oh, this is, going to, this is going to be incredible. God, please pour out your Spirit upon us right now. Okay, um... Here he goes. He goes on to tell about the works of the flesh and the works of the spirit. And how do we yield to the spirit? He's telling how to yield to the spirit by the indwelling of the spirit. He's And people say, well, no, the spirit is just New Testament. I'm going to show you. First of all, he says right here in Ezekiel 2.2. 2, he says, as he spoke, the spirit came into me and raised me to my feet. And I heard him speaking to me. He will say, wait a second, brother. So, so what, what do you mean? I thought the Spirit was only from Jesus, Yeshua. First of all, that's Yeshua, Jesus speaking. He, after all, He is the Spirit. The Spirit right there entered Ezekiel, a holy man seeking God's ways with all his heart, soul, and mind. You say, but, but wait, it's not by works. Listen, <laughs> you're, you're going to see. I'm going to get into what the dry bones are. I'm going to speak to what's going on. These churches, man, I, I pray that they speak this stuff today. It's a choice. Life and death. 
He said he, the spirit entered Ezekiel and he spoke by the prophecy of God. It entered him. He spoke the words. And why weren't these people listening? Because they loved their deeds of darkness. They loved the deeds of darkness. In fact, they did not have the spirit to yield to it. They were stubborn and rebellious people. And you'll see why, why Yeshua had to, he gave us a new covenant. It's not, it doesn't do away with the old. I don't care what your, your church tells you. It doesn't do away with the old. In fact, he says the new covenant, he'll put his spirit within you. Take out your stony heart and put it in a heart of flesh and cause you to obey. He not only tells Ezekiel, he tells Jeremiah that in 31. Jeremiah 31 and Ezekiel 30, 36. That's the new covenant. And he says, be careful. You see, but wait. But I, I, I'm sealed with the Spirit. That's, that's right. But you have a choice to let the Spirit rule your life. Or you walk in death. And now let's, let, me say, let me go here. Because now let's go into the false prophets, because this is what's going on in the church today. He's, Ezekiel 13. He says, The word of Adonai came to me, which is the Lord. So I say Adonai is the Lord for anybody that doesn't know. Okay, um, human being, prophecy against the prophets of Israel who prophesy. Tell those prophesying out of their own thoughts. Listen to what Adonai says. Adonai Elohim says, Woe to the vile prophets who, who follow their own spirits. And things which they have not seen. Now today, there's, there's, there's a lot of people proclaiming the Holy Spirit, but it's a familiar spirit. Anyone that does works of lawlessness and continues in it. Now listen, I'm going to get to this really quick before I go further. People say there's not one thing that's uncommon to man. Listen, a thoughts you'll sometimes have immoral thoughts. You'll have different thoughts that come into your mind, okay? And these are the things that we have to yield to the Spirit, the power of the Spirit every single day. He says to renew your minds daily and do not go be overcome by the flesh, but, but by the spirit of God. That's why you walk in the spirit. But people aren't seeing, say, what is walking in the spirit? They say, oh, just follow the spirit. But what is the spirit? Okay. Hold on. I'm going to turn, turn off commenting really quickly here so it doesn't be a, a distraction to people. Um, and I, I'll later turn it on. But he says here, you, you prophets have not gone up to break in the barricades or repair the house of Israel. They have not restored inside them the, 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 their, their, own, their own wickedness, okay? So if you look at spiritually, so they, they that can stand fast in battle in the day of Adonai, meaning how, today, how can people stand and, and fight the evils that are amongst them, that is ahead of them? And he says right here, the, their visions are futile and their divination is false. They say Adonai says when Adonai has not sent them, yet they, yet they hope that the word will be confirmed. Haven't you had a futile vision and spoken a false divination when you say Adonai says and I have not spoken? Therefore, here's what Adonai Elohim says. Because you have spoken futilities and seen falsehoods, he's they're leading people to falsehoods and leading them away from God's ways. His laws. Therefore, I am against you, says Adonai Elohim. My hand will be against the false prophets who have futile visions and produce false divinations. They will not be allowed into my council of my people for be or be written in the register of the house of Israel. In fact, they will not be written in the book of life or enter the land of Israel or his kingdom. Then you will know that I am Adonai Elohim. They deserve this because they have built let my people stray by saying there's peace when there is no peace. If someone builds a wall with it, without mortar, they plaster with a whitewash to make it appear strong. And what did Yeshua Jesus say? He called the Pharisees whitewashed. Whitewashed tombs. If you know anything about Israel, like outside the gates of Jerusalem, you, there's whitewashed tombs. They make it look pretty on the outside, but inside is full of dead, rotten bones. And I'm getting into this dead bones in a minute. I'm going to show you exactly what the Spirit is doing. What the power of God is doing. He said, call, It says it's, it's whitewashed. Therefore, Adonai Elohim says, In my rage, I will cause gale force winds to break out. And in my anger, there will become a cloudburst with a huge hailstone to consume it in fury. Don't we see that in Revelation? There's nothing new, guys. There's like, oh, but Jesus is nice. He's nice in the New Testament. He showed you forgiveness. He showed you his love, but he was also bold. 
He came as a gentle lamb, but he's coming back as a roaring lion, and he's going to devour its enemies. People say, but, but that's not the God I, I learned in church. I don't care what your church says. Whitewashed tombs. This is how I will break down the wall you covered with whitewash. I'll smash it to the ground. So that its foundation will be revealed. What foundation? He says you build your foundation on either sand or rock. He's going to build, reveal this foundation. As we're seeing right now, the foundation of people are being revealed. And <laughs> all that can continue in lawlessness. He says, and I will say to you, the wall is gone and those who, who plastered it. That is the prophets of Israel who prophesy about Jerusalem and see visions of peace. For her, there is no peace. There is no peace going to be peace in the world, guys. Everybody's saying that you have all the leaders and the world leaders saying peace, peace, peace. Churches are saying peace, peace, peace. But they ain't speaking about hell. They ain't speaking about the judgment that come. They want to talk about grace and the spirit, but they're not teaching what the spirit is. They're not teaching what grace is. You human being, turn your face against the daughters of your people who prophesy out of their own thoughts, prophesy against and tell them that Adonai Elohim says, woe to the women who see magic pads for all arm joints and put veils over people of all sizes in order to hunt human lives. Will you hunt down human lives and while they keep their own lives safe? You dishonor me before my people and the handfuls of barley and crumbs of bread. Killing people who should not die. It's bring those who should not live by your lying to my people. See, they're telling lies. In the same way, there's a lot, a lot of you know, false prophets out there that are speaking lies to make people feel comfortable in their sin. And that's not the work of God. That's not the work of God. He says, therefore, here's what Adonai Elohim says. I am against your paths with which you hunt human lives like birds. I will tear them from your arms and let that the lives go. Yes, the human lives that you hunt like birds. I will also tear your veils. And people, there again, a lot of them are just keeping that veil up. They don't want that, that veil to be torn by Yeshua Jesus himself. They want to keep those veils up and continue in their own ways and believing their ways is right. I will also tear your veils and rescue my people from your clutches, and they will no longer be in the power of you to hunt. Then you will know that I am Adonai, because you have disheartened the righteous with your lies. When I was not trying to cause them pain and have encouraged the wicked not to turn from their wicked ways and thus be saved. <laughs> Here we go. Therefore, you will have no power, futile visions, and you will produce no more divinations. I will rescue my people from your clutches, and you will know that I am Adonai. Let's go into 14 here. He says, Then certain of Israel leaders came to me, and while they were sitting there, the word of Adonai came to me, human being. These men have taken their idols and their hearts. He says, circumcise your hearts. Excuse me, guys. And turn from your wicked ways. Look right here. Jeremiah 32, 39. I'm going to go over here really quick. He says, I'll give them singleness of heart and action so that they will always fear me and that they will that, that all will then go well with them for they are for their children after them. He says he'll give them a single heart in action. Tell me, 20 churches right down, right in a, in a mile, pretty much a mile radius, 10 or three churches on the same block, is that birthed by God? You say, but, you, but yeah, but no, it's not. It's not birthed by God. God is not a God of divorce, okay? People divorce God. So when you have all these denominations, you have all these religions, it's divorce from God. You can go all the way back to the time of Constantine, the rule of Constantine, the great schism. You see all these branches branched out, but yet there's always a remnant that did, that did not keep doctrine, theology, and kept the word of God. And then there's always people that tried to bring them into their ways. Doctrine, theology, according to man, oral law, Pharisees. You say, but, but brother, but... The Pharisees are just Jews. No, Pharisees are in the church today. They read from commentary. They go to Bible college and seminary, and they're like, oh, well, we're experts. But you have a big head and a shrunken skull, and suddenly you're puffed up with pride. He says, they have taken idols in their hearts. People read the prophets so often. They say, but brother, um, this is not today, because the idols of back then... That was actual idols of wood and silver. You hear that today? 
That was a goal. You see what I'm saying? Idols in your hearts. The same work that they, why, the reason they went after Baal and Asherah and, and Molech, you, you'll be like, well, why did they go after those? Those are idols. I would never do that today. There's people already doing it. It's all, all day. All day. I, you know, love of materialism, of riches and money and all these different things. And they say, oh, no, I don't. <laughs> There's people, even in the prophets, he said they, they offer their, their children the Molech. What, you'd be like, well, I would never run, offer, sacrifice my child in fire. But you put you, what was the, what was Molech? It was the love of money. So these people wanted prosperity. So they sacrificed to go after riches. They did not, rejected their children, did not teach them and raise them up like God commanded. They rejected it rather than teaching their kids in the ways of God, the laws of God. In fact, they just denied him and went in the ways of money and believed that he had to have prosperity from Malach. Don't we see that today? That's why these children in these Christian churches, by the time, 90% of them, by the time they reach college age, they fall away from God and deny him. They go into licentiousness and sin, and we say, but they're saved. Human being, these men have taken idols in their hearts. Let's go back here. Because you have disarmed the righteous with your lies, when I am not trying to cause them pain, encourage the wicked not to turn from their wicked ways and thus be saved. How are we saved? You will know when you had a transformation. You will say, well, but, but brother, I, I still struggle with sin sometimes. Why? Why? Dead bones. Dried bones. I I'm going I'm to get into here. Dust setting in front of them a stumbling block. People say, oh, but you're, you're causing a stumbling block. He says, idols are a stumbling block. People use that in the New Testament. Don't, don't go back to a stumbling block and try to put people under a, a curse of the law. You know, uh, you know, and that's not even what he's, he's, a yoke of slavery, he says, is lawlessness, sin. Anybody that says, well, the, the law right there is, is a yoke of slavery, don't put me under. They deny the spirit. What is the spirit? He puts his law in you, and you are hit with the spirit. You want, his ways are now your ways. And your ways are now His ways. You have a power to walk in the Spirit. You have a power to obey His commandments and His laws. And brother, why do you have to yell? Why aren't you yelling at yourself? Dead. I'm preaching to some dead, dry bones right now. I I'm, I'm really am. Some are alive, but I'm speaking to some right now. For everyone in the house of Israel who takes idols in his heart, thus setting in front of himself the stumbling block that leads to sin. And thus comes to the prophet, I myself, I deny, I will answer him in a manner suited by his many idols. In order to grab a hold of the house of Israel in, in, in their hearts, since through their idols they have fallen away from me. You say, but that's for the house of Israel, that's for the Jews. First of all, aren't you supposed to be spiritual Israel? So don't say this. Is, he's speaking to you. He's the same today, yesterday, and tomorrow. He never changed. The same spirit that spoke on Mount Horeb is the same spirit that is supposed to dwell amongst you and in you. The spirit before Genesis 1-1, he said the spirit hovered. If you can't even believe that, then you just deny it. People will be like, brother, do you believe in the Trinity? Let, let me tell you, yes. People will be like, what? but that's pagan. Let me tell you. Because the, the churches aren't exactly teaching it correctly. Let me tell you. The Spirit. You have the Spirit. It hovered. In the beginning was the Word. The Spirit hovered. It spoke. And it became flesh. He came as an angel of Adonai. It became a pillar of fire. He came flesh. People will be like, but how? But how? Listen. His Spirit is everywhere. Everywhere. Be like, but 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 that doesn't make any sense. Look, his spirit is like this. The universe is ginormous. If you want to take the universe as an example of the ocean, his spirit remains in all the universe. Okay, the ocean is his spirit in this world. For example, can you take a cup of a man like us 
when his spirit dwells in many people and thus say, well, you know, I got all of the ocean in this cup. You see, the oh, heavens opened up and the Spirit kept flowing through him. Without endless, without, that's never ending. Yeshua came and the Spirit was just flowing through him. How is it flowing through him so much? It's just like if you have an unclogged sink, that water is going to flow through the drain. And the moment you have sin, gunk builds up. And that's, that water will start slowly backing up. You see what I'm saying? Because man... As, as love has love of this world and idols in their hearts, it's not flowing through them. You'd be like, well, why is this man on fire? But this man isn't, but over here. Because you have to figure out, why aren't you on fire? He says, come back to your first love. Get rid of your idols in, in your heart. Sin keeps you from God. And in fact, those who continue in sin remain in death. You have the spirit within you. You have the Spirit, if you have been sealed, if you believe, just as Moses, and I'm going to get to this, as Moses raised up the servant by the people that are bit by the snake, and everybody that looked upon that, the, the, the serpent, the, the, the bronze serpent, they believed, and they were healed. In the same way, in Matthew, the Son of Man was raised up, and all who look upon Him and believe will be saved. But listen, is your, faith, is your belief sincere? You have, I don't want to take away the power of the cross. Here's what I'm saying. I'm not denying the power of the cross. But listen, this is what, what, what I'm trying to say. God sent his son to put his spirit in you. And you have a choice to remain in life by the power of the spirit. Those that just forsake it and want to go back to death... It's evidence that they have not been sealed. You see what I'm saying? Just as, as Ezekiel was filled with the Spirit, it was filled with him, and he lived in God's ways. You have a choice. Do I want to remain in the ways of the Spirit or go in the ways of the flesh? Sin is death. He came to give you life. And without life, what is sin? Romans says that sin is death. <laughs> you have to know this. See, br brother, but sometimes we get tempted. Yes. But he also says, James 4, 7, Submit yourselves into God. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. He gives you a power over flesh. But the reason your flesh starts getting overpowered is because you start letting idols, letting your guard down, become lazy. He sent his spirit into the world, the tabernacle, na tabernacle amongst us. And we are to remain in this simp the temporary sukkah, which, which is his spirit. Okay, or it's just our bodies, which, but his spirit tabernacles amongst us. We are to lay at rest. He says, those who don't enter my rest, they will not find life. And what is rest? Just as the children of Egypt. They did not enter his rest. Why? Because they wanted to go back to Egypt. They wanted their sins. They wanted their idolatry. They wanted all, the, all their riches and luxury. They wanted their own sins. They got tired of following this God. They made, they made comments and lies about the promised land. There's too many enemies in there. It's barren. It's deserted. We don't want to go there. In fact, they're fighting against Moses. Why do we have to do this? Why do we have to do that? Ask him question after question after question, and they were rebelling against him. They were rebelling against God. In the same way, we have people today, scoffers and mockers. He said a day would come when they would go after the pleasures and the desires of their flesh and heap themselves up with tickling ears. And who are these tickling ears? Right here in Ezekiel. Same prophets back then, boom, in the churches today. Not all of them. I'll get some more in a minute. He says in Ezekiel 14, 6, Therefore, say to the house of Israel, not an Elohim, says, Repent. Turn yourselves from your idols. Turn your faces away from your disgusting practices. For everyone, whether from the house of Israel or the foreigner living in Israel, 
who separates themselves from me and takes his idols into his heart, thus setting in front of him the stumbling block that leads to sin. And then comes to the prophet asking him to consult for him. I myself, I and I will answer him. See, people will go to these pro preachers. When they don't like this, what this one's saying over here, they go to another one. Tell me. Tell me what God says. And they'll say, next thing you know, they're comforted in their sin. Because <laughs> they themselves are in sin too. Stumbling block that leads to sin. And then comes to the prophet, ask him to consult for me. I myself, I and I will answer him. I'll set my face against that person. Make him a warning sign and an example and cut him off from my people. He says, do not become arrogant to the branches, or thus you will be also be cut off. Pride and arrogance. And that's also going after the way of Baal, Asherah, that's the same thing. It's arrogance. It's pride. It's, it's all there. It's part of a spirit that went along with it. <sighs> thus, you will know that I am Adonai. Now, whenever a prophet is enticed into speaking a word, I will be, I, Adonai, who will have enticed that prophet... You see, he's giving, he's giving them over to their wicked desires, just as he hardened the hearts of Pharaoh. It wasn't that, oh, well, but God, how could God do that? God hardened the heart of Pharaoh because he was rebellious, and what did he do? He used it against them. He allowed Satan to use them. He's, I will stretch out my hand over him and their sins, the sins of the prophet, and the same as the sin of the inquirer, so that the house of Israel will no longer wander away from me or defile themselves with all their crimes. Rather, they will be my people and I'll be their God, says Adonai Elohim. The word of Adonai came to me, human being, when a land sins against me by dealing treacherously with me, so that I stretch out my hand over it and break off its food supply, sending it famine and eliminating both humans and animals. You say, well, that's a physical famine. But also, you see in Hosea, he says a famine, when, like Elijah declared a famine in the land, that was a physical famine, but it was also, you know, a spiritual famine, okay? But you see in Hosea, he says, not of water and food, but of the word of God. Because there was false prophets in those days. And that's why when people say, but brother, you know, I'm trying to find the truth. I'm trying to find the answer. And I'm going all over seeking it. That's because there's a famine. Why? Because there's idols in people's hearts. You say, but how can this be? How can this be that people can take a holy God, preach about Jesus, and be enticed by idols? He says right here, I'll get into it in just a minute. I'll get into it. I stretch out my hand, a break off a soup, food, food supply, sending a famine, eliminating both its humans and its animals. Even if these three men were in it, Noah, Daniel, and Job, they would by their, their righteousness save only themselves. You say, but brother, it's not by works. Is God's ways a burden? He also says in the prophets, these prophets are saying the burden of Adonai, the, pro the burden of the Lord, saying his ways were a burden. But brother, <laughs> the burden is sin. Noah, Daniel, and Job, they would only by their righteousness save only themselves. You choose life and you choose death. Says Adonai Elohim, if I unleash wild beasts on the land and they kill its children and desolate it so that no one can pass through because of the animals. Who's their animals? Enemies. Enemies. Even if these three were, men were in it, as I live, says Adonai Elohim, they would save neither sons nor daughters. Only they themselves would be saved. And the land would remain barren. Barren. Dried out bones. And you can go to, I, I can go into other prophets to show you what he means by the vultures will live there. He says where the vultures gather, so would the dead. The vultures, the owl will roost in it. It's people that are already barren, they're dried up bones. Say, I'll get into Ezekiel in a minute. I'll get some more. You say, but brother, you, you're, this, this doesn't seem like the work of the Spirit. You've you got to stay. 
He says a time would come people would not endorse sound doctrine. And this isn't just going to be a quick message, just like that. It's only there for those who truly want their treasure. I'm not speaking from my own. I'm speaking. Okay. Or if I bring the sword down on the land saying, let the sword pa pass through the land so that I eliminate both as humans and animals, even these three men were in it. As I live on Elohim, they would need say their, neither their sons, their daughters, or they themselves would be saved. Only they themselves would be saved. Or if I bring a plague in the land that I pour out of my fury into bloodshed so that I eliminate both as humans and animals, even if Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, as I live, says on Elohim, they would neither save a son nor a daughter, they would only save themselves by their righteousness. For there, for here's what Adonai Elohim says, even if I inflict my dreadful judgment on, on Jerusalem, sword, famine, wild animals, plague, to eliminate both animals and humans, there will only be left a remnant in it to be brought out. Only a remnant. Including both sons and daughters, when they come out to you, and you see the, their way of life and how they act, then they... You will console over the calamity I brought upon Jerusalem, over everything I've done to it. Yes, they will console you when, when you see their way of life and how they act. And you will understand that it was not without good reason that I did what I, what I did in Jerusalem, says Adonai Elohim. The same thing. You say, but Jerusalem, but that was way long ago. Is Jerusalem in your hearts? Is it in your lives? He says you're the spirit of God. So you're supposed to be in Mount Zion living right now. If you 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 should ha if you're truly saved, I'm going to say this. Try to put this in the most simple way. If you're truly saved, been sealed with the Spirit of God, you will not try to do it out of legalism to obey God. You will not try to 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 love your brother or others as as a way out of legalism. You will not say, "Well, you know, brother." You um. You will not. You will not say, "Well, brother, you know." Sorry, somebody just messaged me and it just threw me off. I just I hate I hate phones sometimes. I want to break them. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, guys, um, listen, legalism. If you're trying to obey God by your own works, rather than the Spirit of God within you. You're going to fail every time. You're going to fail every single time. You say, but, but brother, won't you just teach teaching works? Listen. Abraham was filled with the Spirit. When he's seen by faith that even when God said to sacrifice your son, and this is a prerequisite to see, would he love his son more than me? He wasn't, God wasn't truly going to follow through with it. As some people say, well, that's like God telling him to sacrifice his son like Molech did. No, it's not. Because he wasn't planning to. The moment Abraham went to sacrifice, because he believed by through his seed, not whether he was dead or alive, guess what? There would be seeds from him, a remnant from him. Messiah would come through Isaac. So we see that by faith, everything is done by faith. You'd be like, but brother, you, you know, so now you're saying it's by faith. Yes, everything's by faith. Every work you do is by faith. You can't obey what you don't believe. By faith, you can't obey it. If you obey, you will have faith. If you believe the Son of God is going to raise you up from the dead, you will walk by faith. You will know you will not live for this world. Got to hold on to this idol over here. Got to hold on to this life over here. I can't let this sin go because it's my comfort. Let it die. Let's go over here. Let's go over here. All right. Um. All right. I'm. I'm gonna go here in a minute.
Oh, wow. Okay. Look at here. Before, I'm going to go back. Here, here's the thing. What is the spirit? One might ask, what is the spirit? Say, well, well you know, the spirit is it, it's what saves us. Saves you from what? Say, well, hell. That's just a fringe benefit. What, is it, what does the Spirit save you from? The Spirit should save you from sin. Meaning you have no desire to live in sin anymore. Now, I'm, I'm not saying forsaking what, what we still have flesh. Now listen, there's still thoughts that come into our minds. There is no sin that is uncommon to humankind. So that's why when other people judge other people for these sins and act like they're better than everybody else, but have no mercy. Listen. I have mercy for those that are stuck in drunkenness and, and porn and sexual morality and drugs and things like that. But there's a difference when I, there's a compassion for those and those that want to continue in it. That proclaim, I am saved. And they do reject all rebuke, all correction and say, I have grace. So you shut your mouth, you man of say in, they'll tell you. And it let me walk in my, career, my ways because God is grace. You see what I'm saying? That's rebellious. That's stubbornness. Compassionate. He says, be compassionate on those. But even hating the, the, the garments stained by their sins. <laughs> Meaning that we are not to just hang out with them. We just can't just hang out with people. Like you don't just go, you know, if you have, you see compassion, you see sin. That's why Yeshua had compassion on so many people. Let me get a drink, guys. I, I, my apologies. I'm going to go to Ezekiel 37 here. <laughs> the hand of God was upon me. The Ruach, the Spirit. I did not carry me out and set me down in the middle of the valley. Where he, he brought him out into a vision. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. Behold, there were many, very many on the floor of the valley. Behold, they were very dry. Very dry. Why were these bones dry? Because there was no living water. There was no heart of flesh. He says, I'll put a heart of flesh in, in you and cause you to obey. When, when, uh, when Ezekiel was speaking, God told Ezekiel, he says, these men will never listen to you. Keep speaking. These men will never listen to you. Because their heart is heart. Hardened. And they don't want to hear it. Rebellious. Even today we see why people are, today are proclaiming peace, salvation, safety, grace. Just as the false prophets were doing back then. Saying you're saved. And they're said, you're, we're safe. We're saved to continue in these things. God says... Those who continue in sexual morality, love of money, idolatry, drunkenness, will not enter the kingdom of heaven. You say, but brother, but you're just forsaking, you're contradicting yourselves about the sealing of the Spirit. <laughs> Listen, if you're sealed with the Spirit, you'll, all, you'll not go back to the lust of your flesh. You, you, you see, he's like, but brother... But don't we all, all sin and fall short to the glory of God? We all sin, right? But then we come to the glory of God and God, God is supposed to glorify us, meaning we're supposed to repent from our sins and let Him fill us. Control our lives. We are to yield to His rule and reign. Now, I understand that there, we all have, 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 have sometimes, we're like, you know, certain things come into our minds that, that is in unholy Sometimes gossip, certain thoughts about gossip come into our minds, about another person, things like that. Gossip is no difference in sexual immorality. Let me speak of that right now. And if you hate your brother in your heart, you cannot love. And I, I, I want to speak this the same way when there's... <laughs> there's somebody right now watching. I, I don't know who, but... When you're going out to the nightclubs and bars and you're like and smoking on hookahs and getting drunk and you say, well, bro, brother... I'm saved by grace. You're given into the passions of your flesh. You're supposed to yield to the ways of the Spirit. If you truly are in the ways of the Spirit, you're quick to humble yourself, quick to change, quick to rebuke, quick to correction, and quick to prayer, quick to repentance. You're careful. He says, the new covenant, he says, be careful. 
So, but brother, is it this works? This is why people hated a lot of the, the tr true men of God back in the day and said, oh, you're teaching works. That's why they loved people like John Calvin <laughs> and they loved people like Martin Luther because they, they, they taught lawlessness. Like, but no, they didn't. They started out strong in the beginning, then they went off lawlessness. In fact, they hated the Jews, hated God's laws. They spoke all the way against it. Martin Luther, all of a sudden he read Romans and all of a sudden he's like, oh, the law doesn't matter. What does he do? Doctor in theology, wrote tons of books, boom. Bible college and seminary and all, all these people think it's just, oh wait. We don't have to obey anything. Every, in fact, everything is about grace and the law. The spirit is filled within you. You're given a power of grace. The spirit within you. You'll live self-controlled, upright in lives. Denying ungodliness. <laughs> That's why when you have mockers and, 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 and people that want wants to laugh or basically say well they're over there that's he didn't want to laugh at you mock you about oh are they, you, you're you're teaching works over here it's because they are already under a yoke of slavery they like they just want to be free but he says don't let your yoke of slavery or let your freedom be used for lawlessness meaning going under a yoke of slavery again right there in galatians 5 and he goes on to say what the, what the works of the flesh is and the works of the Spirit. And he says, those that continue in the works of the flesh will not enter the kingdom of heaven. He says, I praise that you may endure, so that you may receive the crown of life to those who have endured. That's why when he says, when you're faced with many afflictions and trials, take it as a blessing. It's, take it as a blessing because at the end, you'll be purified if you endure it. And you'll be done with sin. I want to also, I want to get in this, guys. <laughs> you have to know this. Don't let Satan tell you otherwise. He's going to try to tell you, come to you. Am I truly saved? Am I truly born again? Am I truly sealed with the Spirit? Listen, you will know. You know right now if you're quick, if it's legalism or if it's out of the desire, a change, a true, sincere desire. If you are quick, you, you have a, such a humility, you want to be filled with the Spirit of God. You're like, God, fill me every single day. You have to call upon the Spirit every single day. You say, but that's not the way it is. You have to call upon the Spirit. The Spirit is quick to flee if there's sin in your life. He only r r rules where there's righteousness. He cannot rule where there's idolatry and sin. You say, but that, that is that, what is, But you just said that Spirit is sealing in the Spirit. The sealing in the Spirit. You'll be careful. In fact, the sealing of spirit, you'll know when you have it. You'll have you'll know because you are done with sin, meaning you have no desire to go back. You're like, but we all backslide. David, listen to me. You're 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 judging your life upon other people's lives and saying, Well, look, just because they did it, and that's what Satan does to you. Well, look at this life over here. Didn't he do this? Didn't he do that? You're judging the works of other people for your own righteousness when you should be judging the works of Yeshua Jesus. Don't compare yourself to anybody else. Not to me, not your neighbor, not anybody else. <laughs> He'll purify you from all sin. He'll purify. He said this right here in Ezekiel. Let's go on. I want to read this so you guys, so you get to see this. There's dry bones and there's there's living flesh that were once dead and now they're alive. You are either dead, to, you're dead and you're still remaining in sin, or you're alive in the spirit and you have a desire to obey God. What commandments do you obey? Why do you question? The things you used to do should be done. You now have new rulings and desires. You're like, God could sue me. <laughs> Put my flesh to death. You say, well, well, brother, how do I know I'm saved? Listen, you, <laughs> I repeated a prayer and I went to the altar and I'm like, I, I had a funny feeling I'm saved. But then I went back to, to sin about a year or two later. Listen. <laughs> oh, boy. You will know. You will know when you are done with everything. You're like, I'm ready to, to put er to in everything, every sin in my life, everything. Everything that I held on to, all riches, all desires to cling to these riches. 
I'm not saying I'll oh, give away all my riches. No, I'm not saying that. Your desire to everything. <laughs> if, unless you're desperate, you ain't going to be filled with the Spirit. He's not going to come. You say, but I believe in the cross. But you, do you really believe? I believe in Jesus. So do the demons. But they don't... They, sh they shudder of fear, but they don't obey. He says, those who don't obey me has never seen me or known me. How can you obey what you haven't seen? If you've seen it, you would obey. <laughs> if you have seen the works of God and you've seen the Spirit, you would obey. But brother, can I, can I smoke this weed over here? Brother, can, how, how much alcohol can I have? Can I have two? Can I have one? You see what I'm saying? But brother, you know, how much do I need to deny myself? Can I still go skateboarding and rock climbing? Uh, can I do this, pop this pill over here? Listen. <laughs> You're asking man. You're asking man. It's right here in the word of God. Submit yourself to the works of the Spirit. He says that, 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 that put your flesh to death. Why do, why do us people over and over question, well, you know, must I do this, must I do that? Well, how much of this can I take? How much of this can I do? Can I watch Hollywood movies? Can I listen to carnal music? Can, can, you know, Jesus turned, turned wine into water, so that must mean wine is, I can get drunk. You just... You see what I'm saying? If you're truly transformed, you're done with this life. These are where scoffers and mockers come from when they say, well, how much must I hold on to? How much can I keep and try to live for God too? It's either you live for the kingdom or God. You want to go skateboarding, don't let it become an idol. I don't, I don't care if you go skateboarding. I don't care if you go rock climbing. But if you want to get, smoke your weed and get drunk, then I, he says right here. I, I would say this for some of these religious folks that have been in church saying, oh, alcohol is bad. Listen, wine is, it, wine is not bad. It's when you get drunk. And why are you getting drunk? Because you love it. You want to get drunk. I know because there's something in life, there's more in your heart that you're trying to suppress. And, you know, you're yet to yield to the ways of the Spirit. He says, let's go. I answered Adonai Elohim in, in Ezekiel 37 to anybody that just came in. I answered Adonai Elohim, you know, prophecy over these bones, he said. To me, say to them, dry bones, hear the word of Adonai. Everyone dead should hear the word of God and be brought to life. <laughs> Thus, says Adonai him to these bones, behold, I'll cause the, the, the rock, the spirit, to enter you, so you will live. All that is dead. Hear what I'm saying? I will attach tendons to you, Bring flesh unto you and cover you with skin. Then I'll put breath in you and you will live. You'll know that I am Adonai. You say, but it is those that are dead. It's not only those that are dead, but there's some that are living that are dead right now. <laughs> Dry bones. So I prophesied just as I was commanded. As I prophesied, there was a noise. And behold, an earthquake. Then the bones came together, bone into his bone. And I saw and behold, there were tendons on them and flesh came upon and skin covered them. Above, but there was no breath in them. Then he say he's the breath of life. You guys are going to see. You say, well, how do you know? I'm going to show you some faith here. So that you believe in the Son of God. The same works was even done in the New Testament. <laughs> say, where? You'll see. <laughs> the rock came, I prophesied, just as the command rock came into them, and they lived and stood up on their feet in a vast army. Amazing. You see, just as the last trumpet, he will raise the dead. The same way those living right now should be raised from the dead and be alive. Say, but there's a lot of dead bones. I might be speaking to some right now. I've spoken to many dead bones. And many that said, I am alive. I am saved. I'm going to go right over here. Let's go to John 11, guys.
<laughs> Yeshua answered, John 11, Aren't there 12, 12 hours in the day? If a man walks in the day, he doesn't stumble because he sees the light of the world. But if a man should walk around at night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. And what was that stumbling block I spoke of? The, the false prophets were putting a stumbling block and it was those that could cause people to sin. Lawlessness. He says, after, this, after he said this, he tells them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I'm going there to wake him up. So the disciples said to him, Master, if he has fallen asleep, he will get better. Some people say, well, he was just soul sleep. That's where the doctrine of Catholic theology, well, you know, he was just sleeping in the grave. No, he was dead. And, and just as you see in, in Jewish tradition, they, they would wait for the body to be completely dead. There's a cer certain ritual they did, not ritual, but process to where they made sure that your body was dead. It wasn't like those stories that you hear today. Well, you know, this man was buried in the grave and suddenly he woke, again, woke up again two or three days later and there's a bell ringing. You, see, you heard those stories long ago? Okay, but that's different. That's, that, this guy was dead. Don't let that discredit God's faith. There's, there's a way. I'll get that in a minute. I'll explain some more. So the disciples said to him, Master, if he has fallen asleep, he'll get better. Now Yeshua had spoken about his death, but they thought he was talking about ordinary sleep. Then Yeshua told them clearly, Lazarus is dead. I'm glad for your sake I wasn't there so that you may believe. Anyway, let's go to him. Then Thomas called the twin, said to the other disciples, let's go to, let's go to so that we may die with him. So when Yeshua arrived, he discovered that Lazarus had been in the tomb already for four days. And why four days? The fourth day, they're, without a doubt, they're dead. They had a, a specific process in, in Judaism to where they, they knew for a fact these people were dead. And... <laughs> He was dead. He smelled. He smelled like a rotten corpse, guys. So when Yeshua arrived, he discovered that Lazarus had been in the tomb already for four days. Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem. And many of the Judeans had come to Martha and Miriam to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Yeshua was coming, she came out and went to him. But Miriam sat in the house. Martha said to Yeshua, Master, if you had been there, my brother wouldn't have died. But I know even now that whatever you may ask of God, he will give to you. And some people will be like, is that disrespectful to God? But no, it's not. He says, but I know even now that whatever you may ask of God, he will give you. She had faith. Yeshua said to her, your brother... <laughs> Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. She thought on the last day. See, she even knew the resurrection. People be like, but Jews don't believe in the resurrection. Yes, they did. Right there, he, she's even admitted to it. Even This is not the New Testament. This always goes back to the Torah. This goes back to Abraham. He knew Isaac would raise from the dead if he killed him and he would bear sons and bear life. Brother, we're New Testament believers. You're not New Testament believers. You're New Covenant believers. In fact, Testament means covenant, guys. Yeshua said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this, he says? She says to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah ben Elohim who has come into the world. After she said this, she left and secretly told her sister Miriam, the teacher is here and he is calling for you. As soon as Miriam heard, she quickly got up and was coming to him. Now Yeshua had not yet come into the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. 
He hadn't even come in the village yet. To the Judeans who were with Mary in the house and the comforting her, seeing how quickly she got up and went out, followed her. They thought she was going to the tomb to weep there. So Miriam came to Yeshua, where Yeshua was. She saw him fell at his feet, saying to him, Master, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Yeshua saw her weeping and the Judeans came and saw, with her weeping, he was deeply troubled in spirit and himself agitated. People try to go too far with that. Listen, if, you're, if somebody you love had just died, you'd be weeping too. And right there, she had faith. She said, well, if you had been here, she would not have died. She still believed in her resurrection. She wasn't mad at God. Where have you laid him, he asked. Come see, and come and see, master, they tell him. Yeshua wept. So the Judeans said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, couldn't this one who opened the eyes of the blind man and also kept this man from dying? So Yeshua again, deeply troubled with him himself, come to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Yeshua rolled away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Master, by this time he stinks. He's been dead for four days. Yeshua said to her, didn't I tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they rolled away the stone. Yeshua lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you have always hear me. I knew that you have always, you always hear me. But because of this crowd standing around, I said it so that they may believe that you sent me. And when he, he said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! He who has been dead came out, wrapped in burial clothes, binding his hands and feet with a cloth over his faith, and Yeshua tells him, cut him loose and let him go. Don't you see how powerful this is? The voice of God that remained in the very beginning spoke and brought life. Man chose by their free will. They were, had their, their, their glorified bodies. The Spirit of God had dwelt amongst them. Always. They had free will. Adam and Eve had free will, but he gave them one choice. And right now we have choice. He came to save us from death. He gave light into this world. It's not the light that we just see the light from the sun. It's a light that overcomes darkness and evil. He came to restore what Satan has stolen. What we have chose to walk in. To add compassion on us that we may have life. And if you are still dead, you are still living in death and still in the tomb. And dead dried out bones. But if you are in life and you have accepted the covenant of God, been sealed with His Spirit, you are living, you are a new breathing Spirit of God, living creature. You have new desires and you're walking in His light. And you are not overcome by darkness, but overcome light. And you have to believe that Satan does not have rule over your life. That you have already won. Guys, it's going to cut me out. I'm going to come right back in. I come right back in, guys. Guys, everybody, welcome back. If you have been sealed, if you have been sealed with the Spirit of God, you will have new longings. You will have new desires. 
and you'll live in life. You say, brother, I was once. You say, brother, but I was such, a, I'm so unholy, I'm so unrighteous. How can God ever forgive me? There is not one of us, including I. Every single one of us have got in our own ways. Every single one of us. We, he came to pay our debts. Not to nail his, his laws to the cross, but to put it within us. The nail, the, the, the depths that are against us. He came to, to pay our debts so that we may live in righteousness and be a, be, be a slave to him, if you will. For the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed. A righteousness that is from by faith for the first and the last, just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. And you have heard this over and over again. John 3, 16, for those who have, though, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. You say, but, but brother, you look upon the cross you see a man, you believe he was there upon the cross. You're sent from Son of God. You were sent from God to die for your sins and sacrifice on the cross. And as you might live and be turned away from your sins, repent, that you may have everlasting life. You are dead to your sins. You're dead to your lusts. You're dead to your idolatry. And you are new in the Spirit. To all who believe, he says, at the end of John, he says, if you believe, you obey. The wrath is coming upon the sin, the men of unrighteousness. God is patient and gracious, desiring none of them to perish, desiring all to come to repentance. I know there's some right now that are thinking, I'm more holier than now. Brother, what you're you speaking, I'm, I'm telling you truth and grace, guys. You say, I don't sin. Didn't you just gossip about your neighbor the other day? The renewing of our minds daily, guys. We should not be struggling in sin over and over again. It should be yielded to the power and the works of the Spirit every single day. Every time something comes in, every time temptation creeps up, you should have a power to put it to death. You should yield it to the power of the Spirit that lives in you, that you may have control and power over the, the works of the flesh and Satan. Those desires should be dead. You say, but, but you say that you're alive. Sin should not have dominion over your life anymore. He came so that you may have life and have life more abundantly. Be joyful that, you, that God has come and given you His Holy Spirit. That God has come and He has sealed you. Meaning He has taken out your stony heart and put it in the heart of flesh. His ways are now your ways and your ways are now His ways. You're walking, you have a power in what you did it once were able to do. If he raised, raised Lazarus from the dead, if he can raise the dead bones from the dead, he can raise any man that's dead right now. Meaning any man that's sin and dead. The works of the Spirit is this, that you may have life and you remain in life. That you remain in the light and not in darkness. And darkness is sin. The death is sin. Sin equals death. And in it there is no life. You have the choice. This is the work of the Spirit. You have a choice to crucify your flesh. You have a choice to live in the works of the Spirit. Or you have a choice to remain in, in sin. He's given you a power, so there is no excuse to why you could not walk in His ways. I believe every single day. If you already believe, well, I'm already righteous because then you're going to stop working. Meaning, changing. 
the error today, we have just spoken licentiousness in the churches and the pulpits. Meaning we have made people feel so comforted in the, the grace of God that they believe that they're already saved, that even if they go back to their sin and continue in it, that they are saved. That is not the salvation of God. And in fact, that's dead bones, dried up bones. And it's, it's, it's as if Lazarus is still dead in the tomb. If you want the spirit of God, you want the breath of life, you must uh, declare it. You must declare the spirit over you and want it in your life. Only you can choose it. It's free will. He says in, way back in, the, in, in, in Genesis, you choose life, you choose death. Deuteronomy, you choose life, you choose death. Choose life so that you may live in it. If you're truly saved, you will know. You'll know Satan has no power over you. You'll know that Satan has no dominion over your life. You know that you are not, you're not going back into sin because you're done with that. It's not like you'll say, well, what, what happens if I do? You have, you have faith or you did not. Do you believe that God is life and His Spirit is everlasting life? That from right now to this life until the end of time, till death, or till he comes back, you believe right now you have life. If you don't believe in the Son of God, that he has to come to, de to deliver you from your sins so that you won't walk in it anymore, you do not believe. But if you believe, you'll be delivered from your sins. And you just say, Holy Spirit, come upon me and fill me. Rock, I dash, fill me so that I may live. You declare the life upon your life. You say, God, fill me and de deliver me from sin. And if you're filled with the Spirit, everything in that's written in this book, everything that is written in here, from Genesis to Revelation, will not be conflicting one bit to your spirit. There will not be any rebelling. There will not be any hate. There will not be any mocking, slander, or gossip about it. You will submit yourself to God right here before the cross. And His Word say, God, fill me with your Holy Spirit, because this is your living Word that existed from the beginning. Fill me so that I may be delivered from my sin. I want to live in righteousness with you. I, want, I don't want your riches. I don't want to be saved from hell. I want to be so I live with you so I praise you. Satan has no dominion over your life. He has no power over your life. The only power he has is what you give him. And if you have the Spirit of God and you're sealed with it, he has no power over you. You must declare the victory of God. He's coming back to bring all those patiently waiting for Him. There are not foolish virgins playing around. He's coming back for those that live by faith through the grace of God so that He lives self-controlled and holy upright lives. Disciplined in the Word of God. Living in His holiness. Living in His righteousness. They don't sit there and question every single law of God. What do I follow? Because they, by the, the natural instinct of man, and not by man, by the Spirit of God that you yield to His power, you have a power to walk in it. You say, there's people saying, I, but I see. He says right here, even Mark, how did the blind man, as an evidence of the blind man seeing? He says, go, said Yeshua, your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Yeshua along the road. If you are still walking in sin, living in it, with, there's, there's, here's the thing. There's two types of people. Those who have been delivered, meaning those who have truly been transformed and filled with the Spirit of God saying, God, I want, those, I, I want you to change me, humble me, make me like you, let me walk in your footsteps. I want to be like you. I don't want this anymore, God. 
This is so nasty in my life. You don't sit there and ask me why, well, how, how many movies can I watch of Hollywood? How much secular music can I watch? How much can I smoke weed and drink? You don't have to ask these things. Those things are purified from you, taken out. He says those dry bones would be purified. He will put a spirit of flesh in you, his rock hakodesh, his Holy Spirit. He will cause you to have life. Raise dead men from the dead and give them life. The, dead, the, the blind man seen because he had faith. But the very fact these Pharisees today don't see is because they don't have faith. Faith from, comes from hearing the whole entire Bible, not just preferred sections. First John 5, 4, For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Timothy, but you, man of God, flee from all this and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. He says, unless you become born again, you will surely not see the kingdom of God. When the, when the man came and said, how can we be born again? Can a man surely enter a, ma a woman's womb again? How is this possible? He says, you're a teacher of the law, but you do not understand this? When, you, when, when, God, when, when Paul said they become teachers of laws, but they speak what they not understand, he's speaking of those that are Pharisaic, that speak the word of God, but don't understand it. The natural man cannot understand the ways of the Spirit. And if you just want to be saved from hell, it's not salvation. If you don't want to be delivered from sin and you want to remain in it, it's not salvation, it's not grace. If you're sealed with the Spirit, you will know. You know he's coming to raise you back from the dead. You know when he returns, you're going to be like him. Because your desires are like his. Your walk is like his. Your belief is like his. Your mind is like his. Your heart is like his. Your characteristics are like his. Any man can say, I believe in God, but what do you do in the darkness? God sees all. He looks down from heaven and he sees all. He sees every single thing that man says, but this is not sin. You know it's sin in your life. And if you have rebellion in your heart, it's going to make you fall deeper to a deeper pit. If you have truly been delivered and you want a newness of life, you'll see life. And the victory is this, that you're, by your faith that you believe, you are healed just as, a, as, as, as I said, the serpent. The people that looked upon the serpent, the, 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 the bronze serpent in the de desert that Moses raised up, so will the Son of Man be raised up and all who look upon him will be healed. People say, but, but that's of your sickness. That's what they say in Isaiah 53. But he's talking about spiritually. And people today twist that over and over again for their own benefit. That's what's going around in the church. They're just twisting the gospel, twisting the word. Those that don't see the word of God, but just use it for their own doctrine and theology. He wants you to be spiritually healed. He came to physically heal people as evidence of his miracles. As an internal perspective, as an internal understanding. Give sight to the blind so that people would understand. Now, does these powers still remain today? Yes, they do. But it has to be God's will and God's work. The man that was blind was, was, was for God's glory. Not because of his sin. He even said it himself. <laughs> because you know... Let's go here. I want to go here.
I, I want you guys to grow in, in faith. You have you have to know what the works of the Spirit is, and you have to know what those that don't have the the, the work the Spirit within them. There's a sealing of the Spirit, meaning as put His Spirit within you, and put His laws within you, and He'll give you a power to walk in His ways in such a way we didn't otherwise. By faith, by faith, any you you, the thing is, you will not because he says, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. If you have perseverance, you have faith, you'll persevere all things, you'll endure all things. This is the Spirit of God. He says, He says, consider all joy, my brother, when you can encounter various trials, knowing that testing of your faith produces endurance. And that endurance have its perfect work, so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. <laughs> but if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God, not man. Who gives without all hesitation, without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask faith with, in faith without doubting. For the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. For that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He's double-minded man and unstable in all his ways. You say, what does that mean, brother? What does that mean is there, that's why people go asking man to man to man. There's people that even come to me asking me, and the next thing they know, ask another page, another page, another page, another page. Pastor, 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 YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. Church, church, church. These people don't want sanctification. They don't want to endure. In fact, they're yet to lay themselves down before God. How are they not receiving? Because they don't have faith. Faith, if you truly believe in the Son of God, you believe by faith, you will have life. Anything you ask, you will receive, meaning of the Spirit. Don't let the churches twist that, saying, oh, you'll have riches. You'll be spiritually rich. That's not, not always financially on earth. And the one who doubts... It's like tossing away the wave. Or is your foundation? It goes all the way back to the prophets I was just reading earlier. Ezekiel. Where is your foundation? Is it whitewashed and plastered or is it in the foundation of God? Is it on solid rock or is it on the sand? All will know by testing. He says, by one more time, I will come and shake everything that can be shaken. Every marriage will be shaken. Every foundation will be shaken. Every finances will be shaken. People will be shaken. Their faith will be tested. Everything will be trialed, tested. The mountains will be shaken. The earth will be shaken. The sea will be shaken. Everything that can be shaken. The economy will be shaken. Everything. (laughs) Happy is the one who endures testing because he has stood the test. He will receive the crown of life which the Lord promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I'm being tempted from God. God doesn't tempt you. For God cannot be tempted by evil. And he himself tempts no one. But each one is tempted when he is dragged away, enticed by his own desires. Don't blame the devil. Don't blame anybody. A thousand years, he's going to be locked up and the people still remaining on the earth. Guess what? You're going you're gonna to be able to blame the devil. The angels and the, de- the demons, demons had free will. You say, but how could that be? You think God is a slave driver? How you choose to live right now is how you'll live in eternity. You say, but that, brother, that can't be. Because, yes, it is. He gave you power to overcome the flesh. How you live right now is how you'll live in eternity. Meaning, where is your desires? And if we are patiently growing in sanctification, renewing our mind daily, growing in the Spirit, allowing His Spirit to fill us, yielding to His ways, yielding yielding to the works of the Spirit, 
not the works of the flesh, but yielding to the works of the spirit within us that has sealed us in our heart and our minds. That is his laws, meaning his, his, his spirit will naturally, you'll yield to his ways. It's just like when you see a dirty, say, say a naked picture, it flashes on, on TV or you see a half nude billboard or driving down the interstate, okay? A lingerie picture, okay? Some of those Victoria's Secrets like billboards, okay? You see something like that. Are you going to sit there? It should bring you disgust. If you're doing it legalistically, you'll be like trying to look. If you're doing it legalistically rather than the works of the Spirit and giving over to the entice, entice of your flesh, you'll have some desire. You'll be like disgusted by it. You'll just be trying to do it because you're trying to do it because you fear hell. Every man should fear God, sure. But if you're just trying to gain salvation or want salvation or believe in God, say, I believe in Jesus and deceive yourself while saying, I'll just tell you that you don't get the consequences of hell, that's not salvation. And, and there should be no fear, meaning in, in, in love. Meaning you should be done with sin, meaning love should have, have, have its work in you, meaning you should have grown so much in the ways of God. You still fear the, the God, meaning you will depart from evil because the fear of God departs, men depart from evil. But if you're, the thing is, if you love God, you obey what you love. You'll do what you love. But if you're trying to do it, just like some people in those marriages that just want to endure in a marriage because I just kind of have to. It's for the kid's benefit. That's not life. And it takes two. Two people must work in a marriage. And, and if you if you try to say, but but you know, I'm just trying to exist, waiting for Yeshua to come back. Is that the life He wants you to have, with your head down all the time, crying and poor? That's not. What kind of example does that show others? But people don't know. There's times I go, I, I cry out for the people. I go in prayer. I cry. Yes, but I'm filled with such a joy because I know I have power. I know the power of God, meaning He works in me. Just as I know he dwells in other people, such as some watching right now, and you are sealed with the Spirit. You're done with sin, and you're walking in it. You are sealed with the Spirit. He is coming back for you. Claim the victory every single day. Be joyful. Because death has no power over you. So you die right now. You know where you're going. You say, I'm going with God. Just as Lazarus was raised from the dead, I'm going to be raised from the dead by the voice of God. The voice spoke. The power of God spoke. The word became flesh. The same word that created the heavens and the earth gave life to Lazarus. Will give life to the dead bones. And he's given life to you and me. Here it goes. But each one is tempted when he's dragged away and is enticed by his own desires. Then when his desires conceived, it gives birth to sin. And when sin is full grown, it brings forth death. That's exactly what I'm saying. Sin is death. You're either living in life or death. And I, you know, listen, as I say, some of it is, as I was just talking about those billboards, okay, some of you may have in, ungodly thoughts about your friend or see a, a, something your friend has or a neighbor and be like, wow, I'd love to have that. You see, it's covetous. You don't, you speak it. There's things that we do every day. Of, oh, wow, that's sin. But you see, he says, when you give over your own desires, when you start trying to lust after women and, and men and picture them naked and you want to, you see what I'm saying? If you put the, the death, the lust, before it, it, it gives birth to sin and the desire, you're walking in the spirit. But if you say, well, but we all sin, so I can't do it. I'm not saying perfectionism. You know, although he says, be perfect for I am perfect. But I'm saying, tell, tell me who is perfect. I need to work every single day of the Holy Spirit, just as all of us do. Yielding every single day to the power of God. And that's how you know if you, you're sealed or not. Because that desire, should, if it, even if temptation comes, you say you put it to death. You don't let it go any further. You say, no more flesh. 
You get along with God. Say, you, I yield to you. I yield to your power. I yield to your salvation. I yield to the Son of God, the living spirit within me that has given me life. And I do not live in death any longer. I declare victory, you Holy Spirit. Come within me. Do not be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there was no variation or shifting of shadows. By his will, he brought us forth by the word of his truth. By the very word, what is truth? He says, sanctify them in truth, for your word is truth. It's the whole entire word. Genesis, he spoke, he brought life. The same word became flesh. The law became flesh. He spoke and gave life. He puts your law within you. Only he can take an ungodly man, a worldly man, take flesh, put a spirit within you, yet keep the man in the world and still keep a man living holy. That's the work of the spirit. By his will, he brought forth the word of truth so that we might be the kind of first fruits of all he created. All he created. God is, uh, God is good, guys. You have to declare the victory. You know he's going to win. You know this. But those who are still stuck in sin, living in it, that want their sin. He says you've never seen him or known him. The power of God delivers you from it. And I'll repeat this over and over again. Over and over again. First John says, he say, but though he, people say, well, but he says there that all sin, yes, but you will not continue in sin. Willfully walking in sin, living it. You say, but, but we, we all sin. As you say, we all sin and get, go get drunk. Go hang out at the nightclub with your friends and then get, get, go and have a great party. Go and get blazed up on weed or go and sleep with somebody out of marriage. That's not salvation. He, in fact, warned the Corinthians. They found amongst you sexual immorality. People are boasting about it. Some, some people boast in their hearts about these things. He says, in fact, the very, the, the very judgment of God is coming upon these people. They say, but I'm filled with the Spirit. I believe. You'll know if your belief is sincere. He said you'll produce fruits. Just as you'll be a kind of first fruits as James says. James 1.18. The word of truth. You'll be sanctified. You'll be sanctified. Just do his will. As you be a kind of first fruits he created. What is the first fruits? Before Adam and Eve sinned. You say, brother, but why am I still struggling with porn? You have to put your, your flesh and your desires to death. And you have to want the Son of God, Yeshua, to come into your life, cleanse you from all unrighteousness, and heal you. And there is no power unless you do that. If you say, I believe, you deceive yourself if you still want your sin. There is only one way, one truth, and one life, and no man comes to the Father except through Him. He is the Word, the living law that became flesh. And there is not, if, if, if you reject the ways of God in the Old Testament, you reject the living God in the New. In fact, He's nothing new about it. He said He'd give you a new covenant, meaning He renewed the old one. And put that covenant within you. Just as the Spirit entered Ezekiel, and Ezekiel couldn't understand why people didn't understand and receive God, he said he put his spirit in all that believe, that hear the word of God and believe upon it. You say, how were the Gentiles that are hearing the word, you get being hit with the Holy Spirit? You see, they believed. Then then they were they, they were grown in the fruits of God, sanctified in his word. For his word is truth. And those that say, Oh, I'm already saved, I don't need to be sanctified. They give up, they, they do reject the power of the Spirit. Salvation continues in sanctification. 
until the day of his coming when you receive the glorified bodies. Isn't it Calvinism says you're just you're sanctified and justified once you repeat a prayer? Calvin is a bunch of lies. So is Calvinism. You have free will. Man, God, God chooses those he uses, but it's based on your heart. Every man has a choice for salvation, but it's up to, up to you to claim it and live in it. It's up to you to repent from your sins and actually live in the renewing of the Spirit. The Spirit will sanctify your mind every single day by His Word. His Word, you will understand His Word, and His Word is truth. If the Spirit will live within you and cause you to live obedient and upright lives. You say, oh, I have a desire to, you know, that, that temptation comes in, and look back at porn, and you're like, nope, self-controlled lives. Boom, that's what the Spirit does. And you should not be struggling every single day with the same sin. That's not salvation. But, brother, but I overcame porn for a month. I've been I, I'm going for a week. That's not really addiction. It's addiction. You should be done from now until eternal life. How you live right now is how you'll live forever. How you choose to live is how you'll live forever. And let me tell you how hell is going to be like. If you love being drunk, you love partying, you love getting high, you love having sex and sex out of marriage, you desire it, you want it, you love your money, you want to be rich, you want to be, be praised, you want to be famous, you seek these things in the world, guess what? That desire will remain with you for eternal life. Eternal life. And you'll be consumed by the burning heat of flames. And you'll want sex. You'll desire sex, but it'll never be quenched. You'll desire to be drunk. It'll never be quenched. You will, every single thing, every single pain that you felt from childhood will remain with you for everlasting life. Everything that hurt and pain and agony in your life will come. It will remain with you for everlasting life. Flames will consume everyone. Everyone that desired to be drunk, everyone that hated their brother, you remain to hate your brother, but never get to touch him. You'll never be quenched. You will see those praising in heaven and want the grace of God one more time, and you'll never receive the grace of God. He let you people know that there is a time when God's wrath is coming upon Son of Man. He gave you a choice in life and death, gave you His grace, and right now we have grace to repent from our sins and live holy lives. And it's up to you right now to lay down before Him on your hands and knees. Cry out to Him. Abba, Father, God, cleanse me from sin. Fill me with your rock. I'll go dash your spirit. Adonai Zabayo, fill me. So I don't want my sins anymore. Cry out to Him right now. You pray. You say, God, I am done. I am sick. I'm sick and I know I need a savior to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Say it right now in your heart. You know you need this. Some of you watching right now know you need this. Death has no dominion over you. You have to give up your life. Everything that's hurting you and holding you on to you, let it go. You say, God, I know that you have sent your son. I believe in the law of the word that became flesh. I know that you will sanctify me and you will heal me from all unrighteousness. The same spirit that rose you from the dead will raise me from the dead. When I die, I'm going to be with you. And I want to live for you every single day of my life. Sanctify me in your spirit and your word. Sanctify me in your grace and truth so that I may live in your ways. someone right now
God is hearing your cry. God is hearing your cry. He knows. You've been extremely hurt and in so much pain. So many people have hurt you in your life. Listen. God is, is cleansing you. Let that go. And he's, he's cleansing you right now. He knows that pain you had. He knows those tears as you, countless tears and that hate that you carried with you. He knows the pain that you feel. He has given you life. He has came to give you life so that you'll be set free from those things so that you will not live in it anymore. Whoever is watching right now, I hear I'm hearing cries from people. I, I don't know who who's, and I don't know who's watching. But God loves you. I'm telling you, you've been hurt by religion. You have been hurt by churches. You have been hurt by your neighbors. You have been hurt by family. There's so much hurt in your life, and you are finding peace right now. I know you are. And God, you fill them with your spirit. You'll cleanse them and fill them with your fire that you may cleanse them from all unrighteousness, that you may heal them from, their, from everything that has caused hurt in their lives, from all sickness. God is healing you right now. God loves you guys. And I don't know who it is out there. God loves you. And I'd rather, you know, be there in person. And it's hard when I'm not. God, God is saving you and you will be set free from whatever was holding on. The words that you, you once did is no longer going to be there. You, you will have new desires and you got, you're going to read his word. You're going to understand it. He's going to give you new life and new desires. You're going to be filled in a new life. And praise God. Praise God. <laughs> By faith, God is going to continue to deliver you. Remain in it. Guys, I, I wanted to go more. God told me to stop right there. I I love you guys. Um I, I I'm out of words. Um God is going to bring such a peace in your life. I, I don't, I heard two people, I heard two people and I don't know if God's going to bring peace in your life. Just continue to walk in. Do not keep seeking his word. Just keep praying to him and thank him. 
Thank him for what he's done in your life and keep seeking his word. I keep teaching and just you're going to know his truth and you're going to continue in it. I know you will continue in his word. You will read his word and you will have a new understanding of it. You'll see it. Be careful to walk in life. There's a power in God's Holy Spirit. And those who know they've been delivered from sin, they have had a life-changing experience. They've been transformed and they have a new desire to walk in His holiness. Continue in that. Continue in until His return. And don't let go of your first love. There is power in the Spirit of God. May we all walk in it. Because there's flesh, there's nothing good in it. The only good that comes in is the Spirit of God and the life of God. And God has come to cleanse us from all unrighteousness so that we may have life. So the blind may see and the sick in spirit and sin will may have everlasting life. <laughs> you guys, you're going to need this in the end days. You don't want somebody to keep telling you. You're, if you know you have been transformed, you've been sealed, continue in his love. Continue in his grace. The law will not leave you. You'll have a love for it. The things you used to do, you no longer do. The desires you once had, you no longer desire. The idols in your life you once loved, it no longer makes any sense or has any attachment to your life. You have a light to your body and a new love. You're going you're gonna to see the way you love others and treat others and even talk to others. The compassion and mercy you see not only for the homeless, but those all around you and those families being torn apart, lives being torn apart. God is coming back for his bride. Those who are waiting for him, he's tabernacle, he put his spirit to tabernacle amongst us in his sukkah, and when he comes back, we'll be at the, at the wedding feast with him forever. Keep that hope, guys. Shalom to everybody, and may you guys have a blessed week. I love you all, and um, if you need anything, just you can message me. I'll, I'll be here. We'll be here. I love you guys. Shalom to everybody.